right, guys. Um, okay, so let's start with California Dreaming. Um, so my name is Alessandra Steves. I will introduce myself in a second. So the whole idea for this webinar is, um, so I had one magazine here at home, Napa Magazine, that I haven't been able to read in months. And then I finally read the magazine and I said, oh my gosh, I wish so bad to be in California right now. So because we cannot travel, obviously, and we will not be able to travel for a few months, I guess, um, I thought that it will be a great idea to, you know, travel virtually to California, okay? So um, you be my passengers today and I'll take you on a ride through California. So, you know, we'll take California State Road number one, number 29, uh, for some of you uh, have been to State Road 29, I'm pretty sure. We are going to go a long way in the US 101, and we are going to go to smaller roads like the 128, okay? So buckle your belts and let's ride together, okay? Welcome to the California Dreaming Webinar. So, all right. So here again, guys, um, yes, you can see me, you can uh, listen to me, and I can chat, but I cannot hear you, see you um, um, at all, okay? So any questions, any comments, please use the chat box and uh, type to all the attendees so everybody can see. So Mahi is saying that she's new and want to thank Juan for inviting to the wine tasting. Yes, welcome. Thank you so much, Juan. Um, we met a long time ago and, you know, happy to have you, Juan, tonight as well. All right, so a little bit about me. Um, I began my corporate career as a lawyer and um, nowadays I am the director of wine education for Florida Wine Academy. I have many qualifications of, uh, in wine. The most important is the WSET diploma, the level four, and now I am a master of wine candidate, waiting to sit my exam in approximately 40 days. So I'll let you guys know how that goes, okay? More about that later or at another opportunity. So Mary Lou is asking, will be this available to go back and listen to? Yes, on our YouTube channels, um, all the presentations and everything is in there, okay? Okay, so a little bit about Florida Wine Academy. For those of you who are new, so Florida Wine Academy, um, we are a family business here in Miami, in downtown Miami. So we teach wine, spirits, and sake courses. Uh, with that, we have 305 wines. So 305 wines, we do sell wines. Uh, some of you bought the pack, so thank you so much for supporting our small business during this time. And um, so we sell wine as well. And there is a website, 305wines.com. And we organize two events. One is called Vino Summit, which is a wine conference. We just had it last month. And one is Miami Champagne Week, which is every October, okay? So for the we next webinar, I was thinking in something champagne related. I cannot disclose anything at this moment, but I'll let you guys know, all right? Okay, so that is us. Um, uh, yes, we do a lot of fun stuff. In here on the chat box, you see Nicole Ramos. She is also one of our educators and teachers. And you see Brenda Paul, who's our marketing specialist and our, our champagne consultant because she knows all things related to champagne. So, but today it is not champagne. So let's go to California. Okay, so in here you see the California wine country and California is a big state, as you know, surrounded by water. We have the Pacific in here and from San Diego down here up to Mendocino, there is a lot of wine regions. Most of us know Napa. Oh, sorry. So most of us know Napa, but Napa is just a tiny part of everything else. Okay. And uh, very interesting what's happening in California right now with these regions, um, the San Diego County um, growing up in quality and, um, uh, and you know, very well-known regions. And then we have all these regions in here close to Sierra Nevada, 
Amador, El Dorado, Placer, Nevada co uh, County. So a lot of different wines being produced in California. So for today, my whole idea was to go to four different uh, regions and, and explore these regions and a little bit of the wine. So we will go going to start with Sonoma, so Sonoma County. Then we'll go all the way south to Santa Barbara, okay? So I'll take you on US-1 down to Santa Barbara. And then we'll be back to San Luis Obispo so we can see Paso Robles and finish our trip in Napa because it just sounds good to finish in Napa, right? So first of all, have you been to California? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, okay. San Francisco, Napa, yes, long time ago. We need to go back, right? It's dreamy. Yes, to Napa. Okay. Love California. Okay, hi Claudia, good to have you. So yes, Claudia is saying UC Davis University in Sacramento. Very cool. Okay, what did you do on UC Davis? Um, so yes, so um, being for my birthday, that is the best gift. I agree, Daria, that's amazing. Okay, so most of you have been to California, but maybe, you know, not to a couple of counties or areas that are not very well known. And so that is why I wanted to have something else than Napa uh, today, okay? So let's discuss something in here, just to make sure that we are all on the same page. So when you go to San Francisco in uh, summertime, do you, can you wear tank tops and shorts and go out on the street? Or is there a breeze or a fog or something else that you need a jacket? What do you say? Yep. It is chilly, cool at night, 60 degrees, of course. Yes, big change of temperatures. Okay, so yes, John and Brian are saying it is foggy and colder. Absolutely, okay? So even though you're seeing all these wine regions are on the coast, very close to the sea, they are nothing like Florida. They don't have the humidity that we have in here. Uh, they don't have, uh, you know, this warm weather, warm breezes that we have in here. So the Pacific is a very cool ocean, okay? So even though people go into the ocean in Los Angeles, uh, it is a very cold ocean. It is nothing like the Car Caribbean Sea or the Atlantic. So vines benefit from it because there are breezes, there are fogs, so this will cool down the temperature, okay? So overall, we uh, say that California has a Mediterranean climate. And by Mediterranean, I mean not because the Mediterranean Sea is in here, obviously, but because the rain comes only in winter time, just like, you know, Italy, Spain, and so on. So it is very dry during the summer and temperatures go down dramatically because of the Pacific, okay? So very good. So our first stop is Sonoma. Okay, so in here you can see a vineyard and you can see the fog. And Sonoma, because it is very close to the ocean, it has this uh, fog all the time. So guys, for those of you who have wine number one, please go ahead and pour the Chardonnay. So this was an extra wine in the wine pack. So just pour a little bit of the Chardonnay so we can discuss that. And yes, so Sonoma, and I'll show you on the map, uh, it is, so this Sonoma County is right here. So you see that it is impacted directly by the breezes from the Pacific, okay? So yes, very cool breezes, a lot of fog, and that will be great for white grapes, for grapes like Pinot Noir as well in certain regions. So yes, in here you have a view of Sonoma. So, you know, just pretend you're there. Nobody's watching, just pretend you're in the middle of the vineyard, you know, feeling the breeze, okay? I'm sweating at home in, in Florida. The temperature is so high and the humidity is so high right now, but just pretend you're in Sonoma, okay? 
All right, so our first stop is Alexander Valley in Sonoma. So that is actually the hottest AVA in Sonoma, okay? Of course, there is areas with cooler pockets because of river and uh, the Russian River, which is the river that runs through this region. And there is also altitude. And uh, what we are going to taste is the Stone Street Chardonnay, uh, Estate Chardonnay 2013. So I chose to have a wine with a little bit more age for us. All I could find in Florida was um, one case of 2013 and then I bought the 2016 as well. So, but I wanted to, to taste, you know, an older Chardonnay from California. Um, about this vintage, not hot, very large crop, great quality, okay? 100% barrel fermented. So you can expect a wine that is you know, full body and um, with a lot of flavor, okay? Aged for 11 months in oak, 44% new. So again, it means it is a big and powerful wine. 94 points, Robert Parker. Um, for a white wine, it is, you know, great. So, okay, go ahead and taste the wine. And then I'll show you something. So you see here, even though the wine is almost seven years of age, it is still kind of pale gold, medium gold. Yep, super um, aromatic on the nose. So you have these aromas of marzipan, oak, croissant. For me, it's like a croissant with marzipan inside. So guys tasting the white wine with me, let me know what you think on the nose. Um, it feels like a baby Merceau. So Merceau is a very high quality region in Burgundy, France, that gives this rich, buttery, flavorful um, type of wines. And this one is, just reminds me of that. Yeah, beautiful, okay. All right, guys, um, taste the wine and go ahead and tell me what you think and please share um, your thoughts with all attendees so they can see what you're typing as well. Mm. It is like having a butterscotch and then some nuts and um, yeah. So Mary Kate says high alcohol, absolutely. So remember we are in the warmest area of um, Sonoma. This is actually 14.5%. So good call Mary Kate, it is very high alcohol. Um, so, but I think the wine is balanced in general. Do you feel too much the alcohol? Um, yeah, so super oaky, buttery popcorn, some gold apples, Daria is saying, I agree. Feels like you need fall and fireplace for this wine. I agree. It is not a summer wine for you to drink by the pool. You need food or you need really to be in Sonoma, okay? Let me go back to, to the picture in here. So now guys, imagine you're drinking the wine in this vineyard. Does it make sense now? Yeah, <laughs> yes, not on the beach. You have to, you know, it is very rich type of wine. And, um, and you know, with seven years of age, it is kind of mellowing down, um, but uh, uh, it is still very powerful, okay? So Jacqueline is saying that she's drinking another Sonoma Chard, uh, eating bagel chips that are buttery and salty, and it is a great pairing. Mm, okay, I love that. Yep, all right. Um, so as you enjoy this wine, let me play something for you, because I think it'll be super cool. And let me try to make the, my, can you see my screen for the video or not? because otherwise I'll have to share my screen. Just let me know if you see a website, yes? Okay, cool. All right, so let me turn up the volume. Oh, I don't think there is sound in here. So it is just, you know, taking us there. So yes, Earth, Sonoma, and there you go, Alexander Valley, AVA. And now we are going to dive in the mountains to see 
where um, this Chardonnay is made. We don't see it. Oh, some people don't see it. Let me hit pause in here. And let me see, because Deborah Hayes raised her hand as well. Oh, you don't see it. Okay, let me go back, guys. Uh, let me do this, and then I'm going to share my desktop. All right. Now you all should be able to see it. So um, let me see on the chat. Okay, now everybody can see my screen. Okay, sounds good. So let me um, put it again. All right, so planet Earth, deep dive into California. And then we go into Sonoma. And um, Alexander Valley AVA. Hi, Leticia. All right, so we are going there, getting there. Bear with me. So you see that this is in the mountains. So even though I tell you this is the warmest AVA in Sonoma, look where the vineyards are. They are right in the mountain, okay? And the uh, yellow ones, these are the vineyards for white wines, okay? So I thought this was a, um, a cool video for you to see. So yeah, the Chardonnays are just in here. So you see there is elevation. Uh, they are high in altitude. Okay, so, so yes, um, so these are the Chardonnays right here. So you see that the reds are made, you know, in lower altitudes. They share about the soils as well. So California, because it is, you know, because of all the earthquakes, it has a ton of different soils. So all these movements that, you know, it has been done for millions of years, you see how rich the soil is. It's not just one type of soil as we see in some regions in Europe. And yes, for the climate, oh no, let's go to elevation. So you see that they divide, so 1,000 feet, which will be, will be roughly three, uh, 300 meters, and then 2,000 feet, which is more like 700 meters. Um, so yes, um, you can see where these vineyards are. I thought it was a very cool video as well on the website. So, and here you see the fog coming, okay? See how close they get to the Chardonnay vineyards, right? And the reason that you plant red grapes on top of a mountain, which normally will be the other way around, right? Red grapes need sun, so you plant them at the bottom of the mountain. The thing in here is that the fog makes the climate so cold that uh, you can put them on the top of the mountain because the fog never gets there. So see, the fog comes late at night, cool down the vineyards. So yes, the grapes will um, be cooled down. Okay. All right, L glad you guys love the visual. I love this too. And I thought it was very helpful and educational from the producer. All right, so for those of you tasting this uh, Stone Street uh, State Chardonnay 2013, what do you guys think? Did you like the wine? Okay, nice, yeah. I like it too. I think um, you need some food. So think about roast chicken or roasted cauliflower or you know something really fatty and cheesy. Think about pasta with Alfredo sauce or a pasta with um, pancetta and eggs, you know, like carbonara. That'd be great because yes, you, you have a full body red wine, okay? All right, all good? Can we, we go on on our trip? Because we have miles to go, people, so okay. All right, so passengers, uh, please be aware that we are now traveling south to um, Santa Barbara. And let me take you there. All right, so we are now in Santa Barbara County, okay, south. So we are closer to LA now. We are way past San Francisco, okay. I like how this trip goes fast, uh, you know. So we are in the Santa Rita Hills AVA, and that is Santa Barbara County. Let me go back to the map to show you where, you know, where we are. So from Sonoma up in there, 
uh, we went all the way down into Santa Barbara County, which is uh, this blue area on the map, very close to the city of Los Angeles, okay? So, hi, Carlos, good to see you. Drinking some California reds tonight. So we are doing a road trip to California. We, our first stop was Sonoma, and now we are all the way down to Santa Barbara, okay, to see what this place has to offer us. So Santa Rita uh, Hills AVA is the coolest westernmost subregion of Santa Barbara County, okay? They have a limestone rich calcareous soil. So can you think about any other region in the world, an important region that has limestone soils? You can say no, but you know. Champagne, okay, good for you. Brenda, Chablis, great, Nicole. Burgundy, perfect, okay. Yes, Jacqueline say, says Burgundy. Marco says Bordeaux, yes, San Emilio has it. Good call. Loire Valley, yes, so basically in France, right? So when we say limestone soil, normally we all think about France. But then again, so limestone rich soils are soils formed because, you know, previously this was all an ocean or under the ocean. Now, California, as I said, because of the movement of the plates, tectonic plates, um, you don't have one specific soil, but in the Santa Rita Hills AVA, you have plenty of it, okay? So cooler area, limestone rich soils, um, guess the grapes. What kind of grapes do well in a, in a cooler climate, limestone rich type of soil? What do you think? White, yes, very good, okay. And so Chardonnay will do great in here, obviously. And then, yes, so Deborah is saying Pinot Noir, Deborah is saying Pinot Noir, and Mary is saying Pinot Noir. Great, exactly, because you know, you don't have too much sun and too much warmth to ripen Cabernet Sauvignon, for instance. So you need something for a more delicate type of wine, okay? So um, our next stop is at the, oh, I have a question for you guys. So Santa Barbara is actually a famous region. So do you know why? Ah, <laughs> so Jacqueline, okay, movies, yes, TV show, movies, yes. Okay, so Jacqueline is saying Sideways. Have you all uh, watched Sideways, the movie? <laughs> yes, Irene says Hollywood stars, absolutely. We are very close to Malibu in here, very close to LA. Nicole says she has not watched the movie. Come on, Nicole, what world do you live in? You know, I watched 300 times. So, okay, it is a very cute movie. And uh, so Sideways was actually, so it was a movie about, you know, a guy going to the wine country and uh, trying to publish a book. And, you know, the guy was a loser and he goes with his friends. Um, so it is, it is a messy uh, type of movie, but um, the movie got uh, a nomination and won an Oscar. So um, because of this Oscar, you know, the, the movie got to be very popular. So um, the main character hated Merlot and loved Pinot Noir, okay? And after the movie, because the movie was so success, uh, successful, we saw a couple of uh, vineyards in, in California pulling their Merlot and planting Pinot Noir. So, so yes, so the, this region became famous because of the movie Sideways, okay? Sideways in Portuguese is say entre umas e outras, sideways, yes. So, yeah. Uh, so a friend of Jacqueline has a winery in Santa Barbara and just launched the wine called, yes, uh, yeah, because, you know, he says F Merlot all the time. So, so yeah, it was a fun movie. So, yes, we are talking about this region, okay? So the reason for the movie Sideways. 
And with that, I'll take you then to Santa Barbara, Central Coast, Sandy, Santa Rita Hills, Pinot Noir 2017. So go ahead and pour a glass of this. Uh, yeah, so Ricardo, hi. Uh, he, he's saying that in the end, he loves Cheval Blanc. And Cheval Blanc has Merlot. Absolutely, you're accurate. And the whole thing is it was because of the ex-wife or ex-girlfriend. So yes, so he says, you know, he hates Merlot, but then at the end, he really loves uh, Merlot because he loves Cheval Blanc. So yes, it was, it, you know, every time that I travel and I am in um, um, a plane, I look for videos for uh, wine and this is the only one. So I have watched this, this movie thousands of times. So yeah, but very interesting wine. Okay, so Sandy Santa Rita Hughes Pinot Noir. So I have actually to thank a couple that is here tonight about introducing me to this wine. So thank you, Antonia and Fernanda, Antonio and Fernanda. Uh, so I actually, at their home, when they introduced me to the wine, and the whole idea is that they poured uh, the white, which is a Chardonnay, and blind, and said, you know, taste this wine, tell me what you think. And I, I tasted the wine, I said, oh my, this is so good. This, this is like Burgundy, but this is like Burgundy with a very sunny climate. And this is delicious. So, so yes, they introduced me to the wine. So I'm very thankful because after um, that dinner, I couldn't stop drinking this wine. So the winery was founded in 2010 by Rajat Parr, which is a very famous sommelier. He worked for a famous group of restaurants. Uh, the name just escaped me. Uh, guys, you know the name of the restaurants? I don't know if it's Michael Mina. Um, group of restaurants. Yes, Michael Mina. Thank you, Nicole. So he worked for uh, this group of restaurants for many times. Then we have Charles Banks and then um, the winemaker, Sashi Murman. So the three of them got together and acquired these vineyards and started producing high-end Pinot Noir. And their approach is very Burgundian in style. So they don't want to, the, you know, ripe fruits that we see some Pinot Noir from California, they want to have something more balanced, okay? And if you see in here, they use wild yeast for fermentation, they use neutral oak barrels, uh, the wines are unfined, unfiltered. So the thing about neutral oak barrels is very important as well, because in California, everybody was putting new oak with Pinot Noir. But think about that, Pinot Noir is a very light um, bodied grape, has very low tannins, very delicate aromas and flavors. And when you put oak, you kind of, you know, messing with the Pinot Noir and making it too strong. So in this case, their approach is to use neutral oak barrels. So the oak is there to give roundness, not to add anything, okay? So they say that the grapes came from this Domaine de la Côte Vineyards, which is a vineyard that uh, they uh, have this name, and a couple from, from the Sanford and Benedict Vineyards. 93 points Robert Parker, which is great. Um, and I always put the points in here. And um, go ahead and taste the wine. What parallel is Santa Barbara? Good question but I think it should be, you know, maybe 40 something. Uh, I'm not sure if, um, you know, anyone can Google it. Um, so yes, in the case of Santa Barbara, Susan, it is not because of the parallel, right? Because that works for Europe. When we say a vineyard is in parallel 50 north, we know it is pretty cool. But in here is proximity to the ocean and if it is away from the ocean. And Santa Rita Hills, they, are, they receive a lot of the cool breezes and fogs. So that is why um, you have the climate for Pinot Noir, okay? Guys, go ahead and taste the Pinot Noir. So, oh, this is very interesting. So I can see that the wine is not fine and filtered because actually the wine is not brilliant type of color. Uh, for those of you who have the wine, let me see if I can. Um, show you guys. It is a little cloudy. Yeah, no, 
The cell phone doesn't help too much because it appears to be purple. The wine is not purple at all. It's more like brick color. But can you see that it's not, it is a little cloudy. It is not brilliant. So this is unfined, okay, and unfiltered. That is how you see if the wine has been fined or filtered. Okay, smells delicious. What do you guys get? Ah, so good. Okay, crunchy cherries, cherry cola. Yes, okay. Yeah, I agree. Super earthy, I agree. It is earthy, yes. Yeah, so you have this, you know, cherries and then you have mushrooms and earthy clay. So yeah, it is very, you know, earthy type of wine. But it's beautiful. So on the palate. Yes, so super high in acids, makes your mouth water. Irene is saying it is green, kind of bra uh, brambly. I agree. It has a little bit of that. Um, it says 100% a de-stamped. I think there is some stem inclusion in here because there is some green notes. Um, complex and uh, really delicious. So for the people who are not drinking this wine, if you are in Brazil or in Australia or in Texas, um, what, what is, are you guys drinking tonight? Okay, so Daria is saying she loves the wine. I love it too, because I think it is so elegant and so delicate. So Brenda's drinking a champagne. Brenda, come on. This is a class about California wines. You are in the wrong class. <laughs> okay, so Jacqueline has B100 Pinot Noir from Mendocino. Good, all right. Leticia says, nothing yet. Oh my, it is Friday night. Um, yes, so pear ruby, earthy cherry some spices, okay, sounds good. Um, so Antonio has asked, what is the aging potential for this wine? So talking about aging potential for red wines, first of all, you have to have tannins, right? Because that gives you structure. And then you have to have acidity so that the wine keeps its freshness and fruitiness too. In this case, this wine is fruity, fresh, delicious, but it is a wine meant to consume when young. This is actually the entry level wine of the Sandy collection, okay? Because they have a couple of single vineyard Pinot Noirs. So this is the entry level. Uh, this one costs 30, 30 something dollars maybe. So it is their entry level. So it is a wine to drink right now, okay? You can keep for three to five years, but you know, this is not a very age worthy wine. Even though the bottle is super heavy and you know, super thick bottle as well. And you can see the cork is natural cork and it is actually big. So let me compare to another one. So, you know, this costs a lot of money guys. Uh, if you compare it to the cork from the, um, the Heights uh, Zinfandel, um, so the Sandy one, it's, it's bigger. And um, so yes, this is a very high quality cork. So meaning the cork, the bottle, the packaging uh, tells you that this wine can age a longer time. I would, you know, it is a fun wine, drink it right now. Okay, let me see a couple of questions in here. Um, so Vicky is drinking the Zinfandel from yesterday's WST Level 2 course. Good for you. Okay. So yes, Hannah is saying um, she's not sure. Probably she's drinking coffee right now in Australia. Maybe a Pinot from Victoria. Sounds delicious to me. Um, and okay. So couldn't find in, in Texas. Sorry about that, Claudia. I wish I could ship to Texas, um, but yes. 
So $37.99. Um, why don't use foil on top? Oh, very good question. So because I think it is their entry level wine. So what the RIA is asking me is that, you know, every wine, every bottle of wine has this foil that you have to cut to remove the cork. In this case, the Sandy doesn't have, okay? It just comes just like this with the cork. So nothing covering the cork. I think it is an entry level wine. It is ready to be drunk right now. And it is that more natural approach to tasting wines. So uh, their vineyards are sustainable. Um, so yes, and Antonio says um, he does not use foil for their sparkling wines. So this is, you know, just the way. He's a very popular guy, Hajit Far, very popular guy. I think he was in the movie Song as well. And uh, so he's a very popular guy. guy. Whatever he does, you know, people will love it. But this, this wine is really, really good. I really like their wines um, <clears throat> as well. All right, all good. Can we move on? Are you ready to hit the road again? Yes? All right, so passengers, now we are heading north and we are going to Paso Robles, okay? And by the way, in Miami, we say Paso Robles, but in California, they do say Paso Robles, okay? So, um, yes, really happy. So Paso Robles AVA, um, maybe you know what? Let me go back to the big map to show you where Paso is. So yes, we were in Santa Barbara County. Now we took US-1 and we are heading north to San Luis Obispo County. Okay, this area over here. And Paso is actually um, a region that has, um, you know, can be quite warm depending where you are. So um, you see different inside the Paso Robles AVAs, you have 11 sub AVAs. Um, and so, you know, most of them are warm. So these, they are for warm climates. Um, so go ahead, open your Tablas Creek Vineyard. And meanwhile, I want to show you a movie just to give you, uh, just, you know, to put you in the contest of Paso Robles, okay? So let me do this first. I'll stop sharing and let me go um, in here. Let me close this. And yes, and now I'm going to put the big screen. For you guys to see so first of all be, before i hit okay can, can you guys um see the youtube oh, sorry no oh okay so share screen all right so click as exit okay can you guys see the youtube now? Yay. Okay. Good. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, all right. It is just two minutes, uh, but it's totally worth it. So you can get to understand what Paso Robles is. Okay. All right. Does a man have only one life? Yes. One wife? Occasionally. One wine? Preposterous. The question should never be red or white, but which man, which wife? For wine, like men, are not colors, but varieties. Do I smell grass, charcoal, church bingo? No. I smell freedom. Freedom from the tyranny of a single grip. Do you know Veritas? Please. In Paso, we believe in vino variety. Chardonnay, blonde. When it goes wrong, it's all spray tan, bleached teeth, and big air. But when done right, California beauty. Viognier, that's obvious, more mysterious. How to pronounce it? Only your first time. Viognier. You think real men don't drink pink? Real men aren't afraid of the tinting of gorgeous juice. Real men fear only 
unrequited love. Comes with nothing but the day's catch. Bravado, a sport. You prepare a sumptuous meal. The wine, Pinot Noir, earthy, elegant, ephemeral, like me. GSM, bam. Syrah, the magnetic lead singer. Grenache on bass. Mufetra, drums. The rolling rolls. They make their own rules. Rock stars. Zinfandel, assertive, unabashed. Wine for those that conquered the Sierras, built bridges, and turned beach volleyball into a professional sport. Powerful, brooding Cabernet Sauvignon. It can be a summer blockbuster, or a classic built for the ages, the envy of the world. Men can go mad with the quest to perfect it. These are the wines of possibilities. Your glass is waiting. It's full. Possibility. Isn't this great? <laughs> So uh, this guy is the Paso, uh, Paso wine man, and he has tons of videos. Uh, <laughs> I know it is amazing, and um, and you know the reason that I wanted to to share this with you is because yes, in Paso Robles you can do everything from Chardonnay to Cabernet Sauvignon to Zinfandel to you know GSM blends, everything. Okay. Yeah, so the videos are amazing. And, you know, I, I watched these videos back in 2013 or so, but I always remember, um, yeah. I'll, I'll share you the link, but if you go to Paso Robles or Paso Robles, you see that he, he says Robles, not Robles, okay? So he says Paso Robles. And um, yes, on YouTube, they have a channel and all the videos are in there. So super, super interesting video. Okay, um, all right, guys, so we are back um, to Paso Robles in here, okay? And now we are going to go to Tabla Bluss Creek Vineyard. So please join me as we go into the Adelaide district of Paso Robles, okay? So go ahead, open your bottles of wine and uh, Let's taste, this is Patelin de Tablas, Paso Robles. And it is Tablas Creek Vineyard, it's a producer 2017. This is an epic producer, by the way. So let me clear my glass in here so I can pour um, some wine. This is rich color. Can you see the difference between the Pinot Noir and this one? Okay, so let me uh, tell you about the story of this winery. So the winery was founded in 1989, okay? And it is a partnership between the, the Famille Perrin of the Rhone Valley, the, the makers of Chateauneuf du Pape and uh, Chateau de Beaucastel, Chateauneuf du Pape, and the Haas family. The Haas family are importers of wine, is the vineyard brands. So these two families uh, united to found this winery. Uh, called Tablas Creek. So, but they have decided that they wanted the vines, the same vines as the vines they had in Chateau of the Pop or in the Rome Valley. So, uh, what they did is that they imported vine cuttings from France, okay, in 1990. Now, the USDA, so the Department of Agriculture, said, okay, we just need a three year. Uh, indexing process to make sure that these vines are virus free. So the vines arrived in the US in 1990 and until 1993, they were with uh, the US Department of Agriculture, making sure that the vines had no diseases. And then plantings began in 1994, okay? So it took them five years just to begin planting and you know, uh, when you do plant a vine, it is not next year you're producing wine. It takes you three to seven years to establish a vineyard. So um, this was actually a very um, um, difficult process for them, okay? Um, so in this case, 48% um, Syrah, 
and then Grenache, Mouvedre, and Cunoise. So the GSM blend uh, that the Paso Robles man was talking about, it is the band, right? The, the rock star band. So Syrah, it is the lead singer. So in here, we are going to see the lead singer. And then Grenache, uh, I think it was in the guitar, right? And then Mouvedre was in the drums. So Mouvedre brings a little bit of spiciness as well, okay? Cunoas, it is a, also a French grape. In here, use 4% only, and that is for spiciness. So uh, aged in um, big French oak barrels, the uh, 1,500 gallon. So that is very big oak barrels, okay? So again, the oak does not play a part in here. It is all about the grapes. And patelin, which in, in the case, it is a French word, so patelin, it is neighborhood. So that means this is the good neighborhood wine. It is a wine that you can drink every day, all day, all right? So, okay, guys, if you have the patelin tablas, um, go ahead, let me know what you can smell. Okay, a lot of dark fruit, red fruit too, too. Yeah. Okay, I can see the Mouvedre. The Mouvedre always brings something more gamey, meaty to the wine. So yeah, it is the drums. So I can see the spices, some vanilla. Okay, go ahead and taste the wine. Okay, this is very delicious. Mm. It's ripe and juicy and, um, you know, very ripe fruit. So the fruit is just like, um, um, if you're tasting, it is a little bit jammy, but it is balanced. So Jacqueline is saying she loves Tablas Creek. Were you there when you traveled to Paso? I think you traveled to Paso last year or the year before that. Oh, you were? Yes, yeah, very good wines and um, yeah, excellent quality in everything they do, I agree. So it is an iconic winery, I would say in Paso. So there is a couple of them which are iconic, Justin, it's iconic too, uh, but Tablas is, um, is a fantastic producer. This is their entry level wine, um, $25 but they produce some very high-end wine as well. Yeah. Okay, guys, for those of you tasting the wine, talk to me, because you know, it always the same thing. At a, one part of the, the, the webinar, you start drinking and then I lose you and nobody talks to me anymore. So I'm, I'm grateful that Jacqueline and Nicole are keeping me company, because I don't know if you guys are there. <laughs> okay, Deborah, thank you, smooth, yeah. Okay, very smooth, easy to drink, right? It is not super th tannic. Yeah. So, so Mary's still drinking the Santa Rita. I hear you, Mary. It's too good to let it go. Uh, the spice is very nice at the finish. I totally agree, John. So you have this kind of pepper, but also you have the sweet spices, so like nutmeg and clove. So it is a very spicy wine. Um, so Nicole is asking if there is too much gamey smoked meat notes. I definitely can feel smoked meat, um, mainly at the end, at the finish. So I'm, I'm thinking here about brisket, so that kind of smokiness from a brisket, great wine for the brisket, by the way. Um, yes, Irene says medium body. Yes, minty is what Marcos is saying. Yes, absolutely. So Syrah can have this minty eucalyptus type of aromas. Yes, the herbal notes that Irene is saying. Uh, some people call it Band-Aid aromas as well. So. I don't know, if you smell the wine, try to smell something medici med medicinal or like, you know, you go into a pharmacy 
and you're smelling Band-Aid or plaster. Because that is the Syrah given this, um, this flavors, which is, yeah, super interesting too. Um, okay. Yeah. Plum, okay, yes. Yeah, it is a, a delicious and a very good wine. So this wine, and let me show you the bottle again. So it's 13% uh, alcohol. For me, it, it appears to be a little bit higher because you know I can feel the alcohol in my throat in here and Grenache is one of the grapes that brings a lot of alcohol uh, to the blend. So it can be a little higher. It is under screw cap, okay? And I love that because you know how easy it is to open and close this bottle, please. So you drink a little bit, you leave the rest for tomorrow, you can close the bottle and it is a very high end type of uh, closure, the screw cap, you can see it in here. So guys, what do you think? Um, do you like screw caps or how do you see that? Okay, Brian says, absolutely, me too. Okay, so Irene and George will like this wine with a BLT. Mmm, sounds delicious to me. Okay, Brian's drinking uh, a Carson Rich Cab Sauvignon from Paso Robles. Oh, wow, that must be amazing as well. Um, so Jacqueline likes to collect cork. Um, okay, yeah, that is a good thing. So collecting cork, recycling cork to do some things. Um, I like how easy it is to have the screw cap and open up. Um, uh, and of course, you know, these guys are doing it for the, the, their entry level wines, um, but it's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, Deborah says the ambience of the cork. Absolutely, you know, you go in a restaurant, when you, we can go in a restaurant and you know, they will show you the bottle and then they will cut the foil and remove the cork. They will give you the cork to smell. So it, there is all these things. Whereas, you know, if you have a screw cap in a restaurant, the people will open it. They will not give you the screw cap to smell, right? So yeah, there is not, it is not romantic, so to say, but it's very practical, okay? So Machi is asking me about um, the Corvin system. Uh, yes, absolutely. So I do use Corvin at home a lot. I use, uh, we have Corvin at the academy. So it is a great system, um, but you have to make sure to clean the needle after every wine. Because other than, um, if not, you can have contamination from one bottle to the next one, okay? Especially if you're pouring white wine, red wine, sweet wines. So make sure you clean the cork. Uh, I like Corvin a lot, but I don't think these wines will age after you remove the Corvin for another 10 years. So maybe, yes, if you're drinking it and, you know, in the next six months to a year, you finish those wines. Um, but yeah, please make sure not to have contamination with, um, with um, the needle, okay? Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So Simon is, says, uh, uh, is saying that uh, the screw caps were invented in New Zealand. A few years, we couldn't get the cork down there, right? And also to keep the wines fresh and young, right? So New Zealand is exporting the wines to the US and the wines were getting bad because of the long trip. So by putting it under screw crap, you can guarantee that the wine will be good when you're tasting, okay? Yeah, Leticia is saying she collects the quartz too. We love them. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Sounds good, people. So, um, yes, I love the pate, patelin or patelin de tablas. It is a delicious wine. So $25, I highly recommend. Uh, it is fruity, but it has the complexity to be, you know, has a little bit of spices, a little bit gamey fruit, uh, gamey notes. And then uh, the black fruits, the red fruits. So um, delicious and complex wines for, you know, people who love uh, Rhone wines. This is the international or the American version, but really well made. 
um, because yes, these two families are, you know, great at what they do. Uh, and, and of course, you know, having all this process and investing in all this to have, um, you know, the plantings, the same vines as they have in Rome. So it is, it is really, um, a great thing. Okay. Hmm. Sounds great. Okay. Any other questions before we continue our journey? All right, because now, let me drink some water before I hit the road, you know. All right, guys, so jump in. We are now headed back to Napa Valley, California, okay? It is a long road, so I'll say let's go all the way on uh, the U.S. one so we can stop by Carmel. Have you been to Carmel, guys? Maybe we can stop at the Monterey Aquarium because it's super beautiful. And, uh, and then, you know, we just cross San Francisco. Uh, we, we see uh, the bridge and then we go to Napa. Sounds good? All right. So let's go on our journey and all the way to Napa. And now we'll take uh, California State Road 29, which is the Santa Elena Highway, okay? So let's go there, and I invite you to join me as we go into Hyde Cellars. So, you know, they are tasting daily until 4.30 p.m., but because we are a special group, they decided to open up now for us. So let's go inside and taste some, uh, <laughs> some wines, okay? Yes, so, so they are located on uh, State Road 29, so Santa, um, Santa Lina Highway, but these vineyards for this wine are on Howell Mountain. So then we can climb the mountains a little bit and see how's the weather up there, okay? Thank you, Natalia. I do love our webinars as well, okay? But we try to do something different every time. So you guys are not bored. Uh, and yes, let's have some zen. Okay. So, okay. This way. All right, guys. So now we are finally in the famous Napa Valley AVA. Okay. So Napa, uh, has a lot of AVAs inside Napa. Um, Nicole Ramos in here, who's our Napa girl, uh, will help me with how many AVAs cause I, I lost track. Um, but, um, 17, yes, she knows. She's, you know, an educator for Napa. Deborah says 16, yeah. I trust you, ladies. So, so yeah, 17 AVAs in Napa. So this wine, 100% Zinfandel, okay? The vineyards are in Howell Mountain. So it is in the mountains. It is with elevation and altitude, but it is um, uh, above the fog line. So these vineyards are not so cold, okay? Because the fog doesn't hit them. Sorry about that. So 100% um, of the vineyards are grown certified organic and moving towards biodynamic, okay? And Nicole was telling me something about they, they're having a certification about the fish friendly. Maybe I'll put Nicole in here to speak. Let me see how can I do that, uh, because I think that'll be an in interesting information to know. So, so yeah, Nicole just did a presentation for the Napa Valley Vintners um, during Vino Summit, so she knows more about Napa than I do. Nicole? Oh, sorry. So, in here, Nicole? No. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So fish friendly farming, it's one of the um, initiatives that the group Napa Valley Vintners. So it's like a consortium uh, that represents a lot of the, the producers in Napa. And they're really dedicated to sustainability and, and leaving the land um, as good as, if not better than, than how they are using it now uh, for future generations. So one of the things that they do is this 
fish friendly farming and it's basically a certification program um, and it's for agricultural properties. So it's only, uh, it's not only for wine rather, but it is for, for other um, agricultural sources as well. And they are basically making sure that uh, fish and wildlife uh, natural habitats can um, either be restored if they need to be restored or just preserved. So they're really monitoring runoff and soil preservation and, and making sure that you know any, any type of herbicides or pesticides that are used are done so sparingly and only as much as they need. So, um, and the people that are, are using this certification, I think from my experience are, are genuinely really um, into doing the right thing and, and making sure that they're preserving their land. So pretty inspirational. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes, so 16 AVAs confirmed, right? Okay, and um, so yeah, let me share the screen again so you can see um, the PowerPoint. So 16 AVAs confirmed um, for Napa Valley. And what happened? Sorry, guys. Let me go back, um, edit. Okay. Um, yeah, back to Hyde Cellar. All right. Um, okay, let me know if you can uh, see the screen again. And where is my chat box? Okay, now I see. All right, okay, thank you guys. Thank you, Nicole. Yes, so not only are they, um, the grapes are grown organically, they are moving towards biodynamic and they have this other certification, meaning uh, fish-friendly farming. Um, so they are trying not to dump, you know, water in rivers or, you know, protecting against um, any of the, the um, pesticides and everything as Nicole said, okay? So Hyde Cellar Zinfandel. So Hyde Cellar um, was a family business. Um, it was sold in 2008 to an investor, but it was always a family business and very successful because of their Cabernet Sauvignon, because of their Chardonnay, okay? very well known um, in Napa and uh, established in the 1960s and really uh, a very successful since the 1970s, 1980s, okay? So in this case, this wine is 100% Zinfandel. And when we all think about Zinfandel, we think about powerful, you know, alcoholic, ripe fruit uh, wines. But in this case, I wanted to show you an aged Zinfandel. So this is a 2014, okay? So meaning almost six years of age of the Zinfandel. And they do a lot of aging um, in, at the winery. So first of all, nine months in neutral oak tanks, then two years in used French oak barrels, and then one year in bottle. So they released this wine in 2018, okay? So they aged from the harvest into 2014 until 2018 and has been in the market for two years now. So I thought it was fun to see, you know, a different style of Zinfandel, which is not that popular style, uh, but in here should be um, uh, a very interesting example, okay? So, um, oh yeah, Daza. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, sorry guys, I just saw a message. I wanted to say hi. So, okay, so Mary is not having uh, the Heights Zen, but having Dark Matter Zinfandel by Mondavi Sisters. Okay, very good. Yes, Third Judgment of Paris for Red. Okay. Um, all right, French Oak, five years. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you see, so um, yeah, they are moving away from that big, ripe, plush type of Zinfandel to doing some more savory things, okay? So Zinfandel is actually a Croatian grape. Um, also find uh, in Italy under the name Primitivo in the Puglia area, which is the heel of the Italian boot. So Primitivo and Zinfandel are the same grape. And so it needs warmth, it needs sun to ripen, okay? So it has to be a warm weather. 
we cannot put Zinfandel uh, in cooler climates. Um, in this case, kind of light in color, so not very deep in color. I can see the stems and I can see my fingers in here, but really red fruit aromas on the nose. So um, yes, what do you guys think on the nose? It's really perfumed and floral and, um, you know, red fruits like raspberries and cherries and yes, exactly, Simon. So vanilla and cherry. So you see the oak. It is not super powerful oak, but it is there. It is very well integrated, I'll say. Yes, Irene is saying red cherry plum, ripe raspberries. I agree. So very fruity on the nose. So... So I'd say uh, fresh flowers, so fresh violets, fresh roses. So it's pretty on the nose. And even, you know, being in 2014, I would expect more leather or more um, earthiness. It is not, it is pretty. It is, yeah. So Mary Kate is asking butterscotch, I, I can see you. So um, uh, it is more this vanilla type of aroma, but I can see the butterscotch in here. Age worthy, definitely. So let's go and taste. It is so delicious. So yeah, kind of a medium tannins, medium acidity, but you know, everything is in balance. Um, the alcohol does give some warmth, but it's totally balanced wine. Let me uh, show you the label in here. So it's an iconic label and winery. Um, yes, hi, Sellers, Napa Valley Zinfandel 2014. Hi, Daniel. Um, yes, 100% Napa Valley grapes. In here, they say 14.5%. Um, yes, so I said the alcohol was a little bit warm, but you know, I didn't think it was too, too much. And I, I, I just think the wine is super balanced. So John is asking, would you consider this high alcohol for Zen 14.5? No, absolutely not. So the thing about um, Zinfandel is that when you look at grape bunches on the same bunch, you can have uh, green grapes, ripe grapes, and then um, uh, raisins on the same bunch. So because of that, Zinfandels usually have 15% in alcohol, 16% in alcohol. Some producers like to do a style more like Amarone style, just like, you know, the Italian Amarone della Valpolicella. So then it goes all the way to 16%. And so that is why I'm, I'm, I'm saying that I think this is more a lighter style of Zinfandel, more balanced one, okay? So Jesus is asking, almost all the grapes grow in California, yes. Absolutely. So they have everything because the climate permits it. So, and talking about that, Jesus, I have tasted a delicious albarino from California. So we were talking about doing an albarino class and I have tasted one, which is delicious. So yes, California can do it all because, you know, the climate um, is sunny, but very diverse. Okay. So yes, um, Mary saying that her wine is super balanced, totally age worthy. I think so too for this one. I think, you know, even though it has almost six years of age, you can keep this wine longer, okay? Um, yes, Shani Blunt from California and John and Brian are saying that the wine is delicious. Glad you guys like it. I like it too. So haven't heard from other people who have um, the Zinfandel. So let me ask some people directly in here. Juan, what do you think about the wine? Antonio and Fernando, what do you think about the wine? So guys, talk to me, because otherwise it is just me talking all the time in here. So what do you guys think? Yes, Napa is amazing. I agree, I agree. Yeah, the cab is fantastic. Yes, it is a very good producer. Um, yes. So yeah, I agree. And uh, he's saying uh, he's not a big fan of Zinfandel, but this wine is super delicious. Love it. Yeah, it is very balanced. And with the pizza you're having later, it is going to be a perfect pairing. So yes, 
great wine for pizza as well. So this wine uh, retails for, I don't know, but you know, it is not a very pricey wine. I think maybe in the 30 something dollar range. Um, Irene says she, she loves Zen's and she liked the wine. Glad to hear, cheers to you guys. And Juan is saying great well-balanced wine with deep ruby color and great fruit. Danny, the girlfriend is in love with it. Cheers to you, Danny, happy to hear. Yes, the highest team does not make bad wines. No, absolutely. Everything you buy from them, the wines can be super pricey. So a couple of hundred dollars. So, so yeah, I was glad to find, you know, a good price aged uh, Zinfandel from them at a good price for us to have. Um, okay, Ma Maggie saying she loves it, very balanced. Mary Kate is asking if I would ever serve this chilled. Very good question, Mary Kate. You know why? Because normally with tannic wines, so by tannins, think about Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, think about a Barolo, right? Uh, so tannin grapes. Don't chill those wines because then the tannins are rougher. But this, because it is so fruity and kind of like medium tannins, this I can serve chilled. So yeah, because it is just, you know, fresh and fruity and young. Um, yeah, so John is saying he found some great scent at Prisoners. Yes, their uh, wines are super high-end wines. Um, very surprised uh, with Zinfandel from Howell. I, yeah, I like this as well. And the price is $36, yeah, which is, you know, very good price for an aged Zinfandel and um, from a very good producer, okay? Okay, fantastic. So um, any favorite wines from the four? So, you know, just recapping for the people who join us later, we began with a Chardonnay from Sonoma. So Stone Street Vineyards uh, in Sonoma. Then we, wait, uh, we went all the way down to Santa Rita Hills in Santa Barbara County for a Pinot Noir, Sandy Pinot Noir. Then we tasted Tablas Creek from Tasso and the GSM blend was, you know, rock star amazing. And we finished the tasting with Hyde Cellar, 100% um, Zinfandel from Napa, Howa Mountain. So yes, great wines. Sandy has a special place in our hearts. I know, I hear you. Uh, Nicole loves Sandy, yes. So, um, okay, very cool. Yes, uh, I think all the wines are great and show the diversity of California. Uh, you know, we know California for Cabernet Sauvignon, obviously, um, but the idea for this webinar tonight was to first, to do a road trip to, to California, take us there, but also to see the variety of grapes and, you know, the variety of regions and how much they can do and how great quality wines uh, they have. Yeah. Okay, so uh, with that, uh, you know, this is the end of our journey tonight. That was fast, by the way. That was really fast, you know. I, I, I thought we can be on this trip a little longer, you know, taste some more wines, be on this together, because our California dream is uh, just about to finish. So, so, yes, California is super fun. Uh, it is always a great trip. Um, yeah, <laughs> yes, thank you guys. We missed the cab, I know, what's next? So we are planning for next webinars as of right now. The thing is, now everybody's doing webinars, everybody's doing lives, right? And we have been doing this for many weeks now. So, um, so we are thinking about some fun things. I know Nicole is going to do some wine and cheese, so you can buy the cheese and taste with the wines. And um, I'm thinking in here about, you know, doing a mini Miami Champagne Week. Um, and then we'll, we will probably have Nick Jackson come back for the blind tasting of white grapes. So, so yes, Albarinos, Jesus is telling me Albarinos as well. We might do a webinar uh, in Spanish for our Spanish-speaking clients. So yeah, all right. 
Thank you so much, Marcos. Um, thank you. Glad to have you in here. Um, yes, everybody said they love the trip. Yes, uh, yes, and I drive you safely. Exactly. I, I have to say, you know, I didn't spit the sandy. I have my speed tuning here, but other than that, I was, you know, uh, I was good to drive you guys. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Um, so happy Friday. Remember, stay home, stay safe, stay well. We will um, do it again soon. So hopefully I'll see you guys uh, next week. I'm glad you enjoyed the wines. Hope you can join the wines, uh, you know, over the weekends uh, with some great food. And I'll see you guys again uh, very soon on Friday. Thank you. Cheers. Yes. Stay safe, guys. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mary Kate. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Yes. Thanks, Simon. It is going to be amazing. Thank you, Juan. Bye, Elena. Yes. Thank you, Natalia. Bye, Hannah. Have a great day. Thank you so much, Natalia. Tour of Argentina wines. Okay, that is a good one. Okay, we can do a South American one. Thank you for suggesting it. Um, okay, I'll look at it. Yes, Argentina and Chile doing a road trip. Okay, yes, Mendoza. All right, great suggestions. Yes, we have so much to explore. So we will, you know, keep you guys busy. Okay. All right, guys, happy Friday. Stay safe. Cheers. And I'll continue to drink my Zinfandel in here. All right.